Today I'll be using this 2x10 and some of these craft finials to create a gorgeous spring vignette for my dining table. All of the colors in today's projects are inspired by these beautiful thrifted plates. Hello my sweet friends and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky and I am so glad you stopped by. Decorating my dining table seasonally and for holidays is one of my most favorite things to do. But the other projects that I have planned for us will also be perfect for an entryway table, a mantle, or a dresser. So there's no need to think that everything today will only fit on a dining table. Well, there is lots of fun in store for us today, so let's get these projects started. So I had Mr. Shabby cut the plank into a four foot long section and then he drilled holes so we could put those little craft finials in his feet so that way I can have a ginormous riser for my table. I'm going to be doing a crackled finish and I used the Valspar weathered crackled glaze. I really enjoy using this. I always get good results and it is a multi-step process. So first I'm going to be painting with Waverly in the color Truffle and that's going to be the base color. Then I'll be coming over the top with the Waverly in the color Plaster. And when I put the crackle medium between the two, once the crackle starts happening, the Truffle is what you're going to see coming up underneath the plaster and it is just going to be gorgeous. So I'm just going to start applying my paint in the color Truffle and I'll be painting the bottom first along with the little feet there. And then when that dries, I can stand it up and paint the sides and the top. And now that my brown paint has dried, I'm going to come back over it with my Valspar Crackle Glaze. And I like to apply it with a sponge brush. That way it gives me a nice even coat. And I do like to pour this into a different container. That way this doesn't get contaminated with the original color. And with your crackle glaze, the more you apply, the more crackle that will appear. I'm just going to dab it on the legs and then come back and smooth that out a little bit. And now that the crackle glaze has been sitting for an hour, we're going to come back over it with our Waverly in the color Plaster. And that is going to then reveal those wonderful cracks that we want to give it such an aged appearance. And when you use crackle glaze, you do not want to overwork that paint. You just put it on and the crackles will start appearing shortly. And all in here, that crackle is already starting to appear. I just love how it just gives that old, nice, weathered, vintage appearance. And I can't wait to get the whole thing painted and on my dining table. Oh my goodness, I think it's going to be just gorgeous. So now that the underside is dry and just full of glorious crackle, we're going to turn it over and we're going to do the same thing to the top and sides. Apply your crackle glaze and then we're going to let it tack up for an hour and that's just what the directions say on the brand I'm using. You would follow the directions depending on the brand you use as well. And now we're coming over the top with our Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I can see that I am starting to get some good crackle. And you can see all of this glorious crackle in there. I absolutely love it. It turned out exactly how I had hoped that it would. And now once this dries, we'll move on to our next project. I finished up my riser by adding some little felt rounds to the feet and then I went back and coated the paint with some clear wax just to seal and protect everything. We're going to be using wood beads and some pipe cleaners to make some adorable little napkin rings for my place setting. I added one teaspoon of my Waverly paint to a plastic container and then added two tablespoons of water to that and then stirred it up. 
Then I drop in my beads and just mix that all around, making sure that they all get coated with the paint. And then I just take a wooden skewer and load up those beads. Once all my beads are loaded on my skewer, I just kind of shake it over the container a little bit just to kind of get off any drips. And I've got it resting on a baking dish. And then I take my brush and spread them out, giving a little space between each of the beads. So while our paint is drying, I'm going to be using an old curtain panel to make some napkins for my table. The fabric on this curtain panel has almost like a linen appearance to it. I really like that. And so curtain panels, when you can find them at the thrift store, are a very economical way to purchase fabric. Now I'm just going to take my quilting mat and use it as a guide to cut my fabric into 16 by 16 inch squares. And with all of my pieces cut out, I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue to attach this sweet little eyelet trim all around the edges of my napkin. And I think that's going to give it just such a sweet little French country cottage style look, just perfect for my decorating theme. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue along that stitched edge here on the trim. And I'm only going to do it in small sections. And then I can place my fabric over that. And that is just so sweet. And I'm going to follow that same process and apply this to the edges of all six of my napkins here. Oh, these little napkins are just so sweet. I love them. And the good thing about the Fabri-Tac glue, after it's dried for 24 hours, everything is machine washable. So these can just be tossed in and they'll come clean after using. And now to assemble our napkin rings, you're going to take your pipe cleaner and you're just going to thread on eight of your beads. Now you may need more or less beads depending on the size of your beads, but I will leave a link for you below. I got these off of Amazon and they really are a good quality. So we're going to thread on eight of our beads. Then you're going to form your circle just like that. And you want to very tightly twist those ends around because you don't want it coming apart. And now I'm going to twist it side to side like this. And I've got some little snippers here and I'm going to clip off the excess. And then I'm just going to work those ends under as best I can. And all you do is just thread it on top of your little napkin. And you're done. How cute and quick and easy was that? And that's going to look really sweet on my plate when I get all of my table put together. I love that. For our next project, we're going to be making candle rings. And normally when you make a candle ring, you would use a pillar candle, but I want to use a taper in mine, so we're going to do it just a little differently. I have traced and cut out some green scrapbooking paper, and that's what I'm going to be using as the base to which we're going to start adding our florals. I'm going to take and fold my circle in half and in half again to find my center. And then I can take a craft knife and cut out the center in an X shape so I can then insert my taper candle. And I'm going to take some double-sided tape and just run it along the ridge here in just a couple of areas. This can be removed later with some Goo Gone, and it's not permanent. And I want to start with some moss, so I'll just add just a little bit of glue and press in my moss, just a nice base for all of our florals to sit on. 
And now that we have our nice mossy base, we can move on to putting in some of our other foliage. I like to put in my drapey pieces. And this is just part of a garland that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to place it like that and glue it in. And that is just going to give us a nice drape. So I'm going to glue in a few more of these little drapey pieces here. Then I've got some eucalyptus leaves and some other just random leaves from other projects that I have done. And I just save all of that because you never know when it's going to come in handy. So I'm just going to glue some of those random leaves in there. And now we have all of our leaves tucked in there and you can see how it's starting to build. I'm going to be adding these little pieces of eucalyptus in and these were also clipped off of a garland that I pick up from Hobby Lobby. And then these pieces are also going to add height on top of our leaves, but they're also going to add some drape and interest to the perimeter of our little band here as well. I love to do floral arrangements. It is just so relaxing. And here we have our eucalyptus in there and that looks so nice. Look how pretty that is. And so now I'm going to add some of these florals and I do want some of the little lavender in there. And I also like some of these for a little bit of color as well. And these little lavender picks I get from Walmart. And then these beautiful little florals came from Hobby Lobby. And now these I want to glue in to where they kind of stand up and away from our foliage just so they are a little more visible. And so I'm going to go around and just tuck in my lavender all around the outside here. And then we'll come back in and get our little berries in there. I've taken the stem and kind of twisted it like that. So that'll give it something as a base to glue on. And then I can just take these and tuck them in and glue them in just wherever I think that it needs a little more pop of color. And I am pleased with that look right there. So I will follow the same process when I create the candle ring for my other candle holder. Well, let's move on to our next project. Next, we're going to take these plastic eggs that I purchased from Hobby Lobby from super cheap to shabby chic. And we're going to be using the floral motif from my plate here as inspiration. We will be using elements from several different molds and we'll make some of our castings from clay and some of our castings will be from hot glue. First, we will be using this gorgeous element here from the Iron Orchid Designs Trimmings One Mold. I'm going to take that element and glue it around the rim here of our egg. And since I need that to be very flexible, we're going to be making two of those using our clay. First, I am lightly dusting that element with cornstarch because that helps your clay to release more easily from your mold. Next, you're going to take a small section of your clay and work it in your hands until it becomes nice and warm and pliable. And because this is a long element here, I'm going to roll this into a snake shape. And then I'm going to press it into my mold and begin working my clay into that element. Then you'll take your fingers and remove the excess clay from around the edges of your mold. And then I like to take my Cricut scraper and just flatten the back so it is a nice, smooth, even surface. Then I'm going to work the clay loose from around the sides. 
and then turn it over and walk that right out of the mold. Look at that, what a gorgeous piece. And I'm gonna follow that same process to make a few more because we're going to be gluing this all around the outside edge here of our egg and that is just going to be fabulous. Before we glue our pieces down, I'm gonna take a piece of fine grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna rough up this plastic. It's so very shiny and I want to make sure that my glue and my paint is going to stick well. I'm gonna to have to piece these on. So that'll be the top and center for me there. And you can see how this piece ends and this piece begins. That way I can just fit that right in there to take my design all the way around. And I can fit that right in there and when it dries, that's gonna be perfect. So I'm just gonna start over here on the side and using my tight bond wood glue, brush that on and just gently press that down. Apply my glue and then I can gently roll that around into place. And if you don't have these molds, you could do this with lace. That would be beautiful as well. And now we're going to use our Prima redesign in Madame Garland and in Fragrant Roses to add some elements to the front. And we'll be using our hot glue in both of these molds. And to use your hot glue in your mold, you just simply run that glue and just fill up that mold completely with your glue. And then once your glue has turned opaque, you just simply pop it right out of the mold. Just like that. And the same thing with our rose. They just pop right out. Sometimes after pulling those molds out, you will have excess glue hanging out there. So I just take a sharp pair of scissors and just snip off all of that excess glue. And then I come back with a fingernail file and just smooth everything out. I like that there. I'll just load some up on the back and press and hold. So I think the rose is gonna look great there. And then I can pop in that leaf and I think that's gorgeous. And I'm just gonna glue these same elements onto this egg as well. And now we're going to give both of our eggs a coat of paint in the color plaster. But then once our paint dries, we'll come back and bring out all of those details with some gorgeous wax techniques. I think these have turned out so gorgeous. Now I'm just coming in with some clear wax and I'm coating everything and that is just going to seal and protect all of our painted surfaces. Then we're just going to gently dab away any excess of that clear wax. Now I'm taking the Rub and Buff in European Gold and I'm taking a very small little detail brush and I'm just gonna pounce it into those details. Just like that. And I'm just gonna work in small sections and rub that back. And it just starts settling into all of those details and just makes them pop even more. And then once I finished adding all of my European gold rub and buff, we're gonna come back over the top of that with some of the rose gold. And I think that that's just going to look gorgeous. And any area like this where you feel like you may have gotten a little heavy handed with your dark wax, you just put a little bit of clear wax on your paper towel. So then you're just left with a nice clean surface again. And you can see the difference here, how it really brings out those details and it makes it look so nice and aged and vintage as well. And now I'm coming back over with my rose gold wax and I've got a little bit on my finger and I'm just gonna lightly dab that over the top 
a little hard to see on camera, but I can tell already that I love the addition of that rose gold wax. So I'm just going to use this same process and go ahead and complete my other egg as well. So I added just the rose gold to this one and that is very pretty. I still think I like this one better though. I think it just adds more depth and drama and impact, but either of these I think is just gorgeous. So now let's move on to our very last project. For our last project, we're going to be using coffee filters to make some adorable cabbages. Isn't that just the cutest? I saw a picture on Pinterest and I thought, oh my goodness, that will just look adorable on my spring table. You could use foam balls for the center of yours, but I just like to recycle things. This is just packaging paper and that's what I'm going to scrunch up and use for the center of mine. For my lighter colored coffee filters, I used the color moss and I used one tablespoon in two cups of water and just mix that in an old bowl. And then for the darker ones, I used the color fern and for some reason when they dried, they started having these almost a yellowish cast in there too. I have no idea how that came out, but I just think it's perfect for this project. And then you will need to cut your coffee filters in half and the number of filters that you need will just depend on how large you want your little cabbage to be. I'm just going to tear that paper in half and then just scrunch it all up to make a ball. And then I am going to take and add just a little bit of hot glue into the middle of that. And so I'm going to start by placing one down. And I don't glue it to the center here. I glue around the outside and bottom edges. So just add a little bit of hot glue in there. And then I just kind of overlap it like that so it looks like another one of our little cabbage leaves. Turn it over and add some random glue in there. I'll take another piece and just kind of lay it over like that. And then again, just kind of randomly add some glue. That's what we have so far. Then for the next step, I'm going to fold it in half again. I'm going to cut this top portion of the filter off. I'm going to cut this into three pieces. And then I'm going to scrunch that. Again, you don't need a whole lot of glue, just enough to keep it tacked down. Again, we're going to scrunch another piece up here and tack that down, gluing it at the base of it and leaving your leaf portion at the top open. And then our leftover piece here, I'm going to cut that again because that way we're just piecing in what's going to be these little smaller leaves around the center of the cabbage head. And you don't need a whole filter for that. So we've got that little portion done and now we can begin adding our larger leaves on there. So I place it but then I start just kind of scrunching that up because I don't want to just lay it flat. Then when it's nice and scrunched up, we're going to glue that down. And then we can open it up and we can start rolling some of these back. Look how adorable that is. And then we take another half, overlap that and start scrunching that up just like that. And then we can glue that on. And then we're going to come and scrunch up another one. And that is literally all you do. You just keep 
scrunching them up and gluing them on and I get to the end of however large I want it to be I just take another piece and glue it over the bottom to cover up that right there and these just turn out so absolutely adorable so I'm just gonna continue using all my coffee filters here to make the rest of my little cabbages. Then I'm going to get my table all set up to show you just how awesome all of this week's projects turn. It is always such an honor for me anytime you watch my videos, and I thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed these projects, please give this video a thumbs up, and also remember to subscribe for more kind of shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations. And until next time, my sweet friends, be blessed.